Bob Tesca is here to challenge everything you think and know about your brain and the assumption that we cannot fool ourselves. Rob will uncover how people's perceptions, beliefs, and decisions can be influenced by their environment and unconscious biases. Rob hopes to show us most everything is not always as it seems. Ladies and gentlemen, Rob Tesca. Here we go. Three, two, one. You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. That's the signpost up ahead, your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Imagine, if you will, that you are dreaming, or perhaps in a hypnotic state. <laughs> You're experiencing a day like any other. It's sunny, there's clouds in the sky. People are going about their regular business, only there's something strange about these people. These people have had the top of their heads removed, exposing their brains to the world to see. You take a step to get a closer look, and one of them smiles and turns to you and says, it's all an illusion. You awaken with a start. The clock reads 7.20, 10 minutes before the alarm was set to go off. The dream sticks in your mind. It seems so vivid, so real. You make a note to remember it. Time passes. You're going about your morning duties. You're frying an egg in the kitchen for breakfast, and you burn your finger on a hot pan. You run it under some ice cold water and wonder to yourself, why does it still feel hot? No time for that now. You have to go to work. Only you can't find your car keys. You look everywhere, above, below, on top of the shelves, under the table, under the couch. Of course, they're in plain view, right in the middle of your dining room table. Silly mistake. You grab them. You head to work. It's raining. You try not to be mesmerized by the rhythmic bumping of the windshield wipers. A hitchhiker at the side of the road hazy. He looks strangely familiar. And as that tingle of deja vu crawls down your spine, suddenly there's a red truck right in front of you. You slam on the brakes. Where did he come from? It's OK. Calm down. You take the exit. Good idea. It'll get you to work faster. You look in the rear view to compose yourself, and you notice something strange. The top of your head has been removed. Your brain exposed for everyone to see. It's like something out of the twilight zone. You awaken with a start. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, this guy is a colossal nerd. <laughs> and you might be right about that. But I hope you're also thinking about some of the things you experienced uh, in that little dream, which you might have experienced in real life. Because there are things that happen to everybody and they're things that really intrigue cognitive psychologists. It seems like all we really have to do is open our eyes and see. It's as simple as that. We remember things that have happened, remember things that are going to happen that we're supposed to do, but sometimes we also remember things that never actually happened. There's a sort of richness to experience. Uh, we experience a vivid, coherent reality. But when you take a closer look under the lens of cognitive science, it all begins to unravel at the seams. And cognitive psychology is about figuring out what the mind might be, what it does, and how it does it. And tonight, or rather this late afternoon, I hope to show you that the answers to some of these questions are a little counterintuitive at times. And we'll start with something nice and visual. Uh, these are the Ebbinghaus circles, named after a researcher who kind of started looking into cognitive psychology in the early 1900s, Ebbinghaus, more famous for his work with memory and forgetting. But this is a really cool illusion. Uh, look at the circles in the middle. Just by a show of hands, uh, raise your right hand if you think the one on the right is bigger than the one on the left, or raise your left hand if you think that the one on the left is bigger than the one on the right. Come on, hands, audience participation. OK, so people seem to be perceiving one or the other to be a bit larger. Uh, 
of course, they're actually the same size. Uh, offhand, someone once told me that this slide looks like a giant Eric Cartman peering in through a window. <laughs> a little creepy, I don't want to turn around now. Um, but the circles are actually the same size. And there's a sort of weird perceptual illusion going on here where in the other version, they look like they're different sizes. Here's another one. Perhaps you've seen this. The checkerboard shadow illusion. So there's square A and square B. And B is uh, one of the white squares on the checkerboard. A is one of the black. And there's a shadow being cast on B. Of course, all is not as it appears. A little Photoshop work. They're the same color. But it seems so strongly that they're different colors, that one is black and one is white. But they are the exact same luminance, the exact same brightness. This next one is one of my favorites. You are getting sleepy. Um, how many colors do you think there are in here? Start shouting some of them out. Three, three colors? What are they? Magenta. Um, so what color is this? What about this one? They're actually the same color. The ones in here and the ones in here. The one that looks green and the one that looks blue are the exact same color. They're halfway between light green and light blue. And what's happening here is that this isn't actually a spiral. There is a spiral shape in here, but the alternating bands of orange and red are forming some weird concentric circles. And you're comparing this middle color to orange over here and to magenta over there. And so the same color is looking like two different colors. So we have this one. I'm not sure if it works on a big screen. Just sort of let your eyes move around on it. Do you feel a little dizzy? Feel a little movement going on here? So there's something in the way that these little snake spirals are shaped and the way that they are designed visually that gives the illusion of motion. So cognitive psychologists use these kinds of visual illusions to, as, as sort of toy problems and also as illustrations of the fact that we can see things that aren't there and we can perceive things incorrectly based on the context in which we see them. Two circles of the same size can look like they are different sizes when you're comparing one of them to large circles and one of them to smaller circles. Two squares of the same brightness can look like they are different brightnesses when you're comparing them to one which looks like it's in open light and one which looks like it has a shadow falling on it. Two of the same bits of color can look like different when you're comparing them to colors that are around them. And this one, when you're comparing the contrast between the lighter spots with the darker spots, that triggers something in your brain when your eyes are moving to make it seem like it's an illusory motion. So perception is contextual. Based on what is around the things that you're perceiving, you're going to incorporate that into your perception of that object or size or motion, and it's going to be affected by the context. The monkey business illusion. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the ball. The correct answer is 16 passes. Did you spot the gorilla? For people who haven't seen or heard about a video like this before, about half missed the gorilla. If you knew about the gorilla, you probably saw it. But did you notice the curtain changing color or the player on the black team leaving the game? Let's rewind and watch it again. <laughs> 
Here comes the gorilla, and there goes a player, and the curtain is changing from red to gold. When you're looking for a gorilla, you often miss other unexpected events. And that's the monkey business illusion. Learn more about this illusion and the original gorilla experiment at theinvisiblegorilla.com. So uh, Dan Simons is a researcher that sort of does a lot of research in inattentional blindness. When you're paying attention to one aspect of, of a scene or your, uh, your environment, you're not going to be paying as much attention to the others. And fairly significant changes can occur, and you will not notice them at all. And, and I, I really like this one because uh, a lot of people have seen his original basketball passing and the gorilla walks in, and this one, uh, well plays with your expectations, which is something we'll talk about a bit more later. But um, that was a sort of a live uh, version of, of some aspects of, of attention and how difficult it is to keep your attention focused on the entire scene when it's focusing on one thing at a time. Uh, there's another example of this called change blindness. And there's a guy down the hall from me uh, at UBC called Ron Rensink, who sort of coined the term change blindness. and uh, here, here's an example. Uh, here's a picture of a kayaker. Um, when you notice, uh, the, 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 it's actually two pictures that are blinking back and forth from each other. When you notice the change, start applauding. Keep going. Anybody else? That's about half the audience. So uh, if you look right by her face, an entire part of the landscape is blinking in and out of existence. And it takes people quite a while to notice it. And, and about 20% of people never notice it at all until someone points it out. So even when nothing is moving and you're not actually paying attention to a specific aspect of the scene, important changes, large parts of the scene, and blink in and out of existence, and you don't notice them for a little while. Uh, here's another video, also by Daniel Simons. It's a bit longer, but it's really cool, so uh, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> 